Hi boys and girls. I hope you got out and enjoyed the beautiful weather yesterday um, and on Monday. Um, I'm taping this actually on Tuesday and it's a little blustery out but at least the sun's shining still. So I guess I will be continuing to make these videos as long as it's needed and wanted. So for Bible class time tonight, uh, I told you Sunday that I would read you a story that's a follow-up to our lesson, and it's called All You Ever Need. Years ago, there was a village in a desert land. In this dry land, there was very little water. It seldom rained, but when it did, the people scurried about, capturing what they could in buckets and pots. Every drop was like purest gold. But even though the land was dry, the people were never thirsty, for nearby lived a kind man named Tobias, who owned a deep wellspring from which poured cool, clean water. The people called Tobias the water master, and they loved him very much. He shared his treasure with everyone in the village. All they had to do was ask, and the water master would gladly let them dip into his well. Drink all you want, he offered. Not only did Tobias share from his well, but he taught his son to do this also. Tobias and his son Julian would help the people dip their buckets and carry their loads. Day after day, the people would come to the well. Tobias would smile and say, take all you need. He would talk to the people about their lives and laugh with them and inquire about their hopes and dreams, while Julian helped them draw water for their families. T T Tobias was a kind friend, always ready to help the villagers. One day the water master announced to the village, my son and I are going away for a while. While we're gone, my servant Elzevar will watch over the well. He will give you all the water you need. With that, the water master and his son turned and walked up the road heading away from the village. The people were sad to see them leave, but they trusted Elzevar to supply their needs. And indeed, Elzevar did just as the water master had said. Each day when the villagers came to ask for water, he eagerly filled their buckets. As he did, he told the people, take all you need. There's plenty of water for all. For a time, the village went about its business as usual. But then one day, Elzevar noticed that the villagers were not grateful when they received their water. They just took their full buckets and raced away without a word of thanks. This troubled Elzevar so much he decided to stop giving water to everyone. He forgot the water master's kindness. Instead, he announced to the villagers, from now on, I will not give water to those who aren't thankful. The people were surprised. After Elzevar's announcement, all the villagers tried hard to remember to say thank you. Sometime later, Elzevar noticed that some of the people were unkind to their neighbors and mean to their animals. Again, the substitute water master was bothered. He determined to give water only to nice people. If you are mean and unkind, you will get no water, he announced. The people worked hard to please Elzevar so they wouldn't go thirsty. But as time passed, the taskmaster continued to find some new fault with the people. You are too busy. You are too lazy. You're not quick enough. 
or smart enough or pretty enough. With each decision, fewer people were given the water. Over time, the villagers grew sad and angry. How can we ever be good enough for Elzevar, they questioned. We'll all die of thirst. As Elzevar's rules grew longer, the line for water grew shorter. The people growing thirsty began to give up. It's no use, the people cried out. We can't please you, Elzevar. In the midst of the shouting, a quiet figure approached the gathering villagers. Elzevar eyed the man suspiciously. Another thirsty soul, no doubt, he growled. Can you show me that you're worthy of this water? The man quietly strode to the well and turned to the people. I have come to help you, he said. Elzevar was angry. Just who do you think you are? The man removed his cloak. The villagers gasped. When they saw the familiar face, they began to whisper among themselves, It's Julian, the son of the water master. I am Julian, the son of the water master. My father sent me to share the water with all the people. At that, the people cheered. Elzevar became afraid. The villagers wanted revenge. No water for Elzevar, they shouted. The sun held up his hand to the crowd to quiet them. My father's water is a gift to all, he said patiently. But Elzevar was cruel to us. I know he was, but if water were given only to good people, who could drink? No one spoke. The son placed his hand on Elzevar's shoulder. Freely you have received, freely give. The people looked at each other and were silent. They knew the son's words were wise and true. And so from that day on, Elzevar was forgiven and the water was shared freely. This again is a modern parable. It's telling us that God gives his good news for everyone. It's not because of what we do. It's not because of how we look. It's not because of our behavior or our skill or our personality. It's because he loves us. Remember we talked about how um, the penguin, uh, they care for each other and help each other. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to love one another and forgive one another as he forgave us. Okay, we're going to do a little Bible game now. And um, this is just kind of a review. This is another one of the Bible folders um, that we have in the resource room. And by the way, parents, if you want to get any of these out to um, review them with your children, um, they're in the file cabinet and they're under uh, folder games. And there's a lot more in there that you could uh, get out and use if you want to do that. Okay. This is the Bible facts game that we're going to work on today. And even if you don't know all these answers, this is a good practice for you um, for um, learning specific things about the Word of God. Okay, the first question is, about how many years did it take to write the Bible? How many years? Does anybody know the answer to that one? Here's the answer. 
1,600 years. 1,600. That's a long time to compile and, and write the Bible. Number two, now this one you should know. My third grader should know this. How many books are in the Old Testament? How many are in the Old Testament? Is it 27, 39, or 66? 39. 39 are in the Old Testament. Now we're going to skip down to right below this, okay? How many books are in the New Testament? How many are in the New Testament? Is it 66, 27? What's the answer there? 27. And then how many are in the entire Bible? Let me find that. No, here we go. How many books are in the entire Bible? That one I think many, many of you should know. The answer is 66. Now I want to show you something to help you remember this. 2 times 7. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me start that over. 3 times 9 in your multiplication tables equals 27. So you can remember... 3 times 9, 27. So that's old, new. That's just a little trick to help you remember. Okay, what book in the Bible does not contain the word Lord or God? What book in the Bible it doesn't have God or Lord in it? That would be the book of Esther. The book of Esther talks a lot about God, but it doesn't mention his name, God, or say Lord. Okay, four. All the letters of the alphabet except J are found in what verse in the Bible? Oh, this is one I don't know. What verse in the Bible? has all the letters of the alphabet except J. You'll have to go and look this one up and see. Ezra 7, 21. Okay, Ezra 7, 21. I'm going to look that up for myself when we get done here. The longest word in the Bible is, uh, I don't even know how to say that, Maher Shalal Hashbaz. It contains 18 letters. Where is it found? I, that must be somebody's name or a place. Isaiah 8.1. Again, you'll have to look that one up. Parents, you can write these down as uh, you're reading, as we're doing this. Okay, let's go to number 10. Who wrote the last book in the Bible? Okay, first of all, you have to think to yourself, what is the last book in the Bible? That would be Revelation, correct? And, I just realized I skipped one. And it was written by the Apostle John, the disciple that Jesus loved. He calls himself in his book of John. But he also wrote the Gospel of John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and Jude and Revelation. And then how many inspired men wrote the Bible? Okay, the Bible is God breathed, but he used men to write it down. 40, 40 men wrote the Bible. You see how our puzzle is fitting together here? Sometimes our magnets kind of turn it a little bit. Okay, um, number 11. Oh, is this number 11? Yes. How many chapters are in the Bible? I don't know this one either. How many chapters are in the Bible? Any guesses? 1,000. 
189 chapters. 1,189. Okay, now this one, I hope you know this one. Who wrote the first book in the Bible? Okay, what's the first book in the Bible? Genesis. Who wrote it? Moses. Moses wrote the book of Genesis. Okay. Here's another letter one. All the letters of the alphabet except Q are found in... I don't know this one either. Somebody was doing a lot of research for this. Daniel chapter 4, verse 37. Daniel chapter 4, verse 37. Okay, the longest verse in the Bible, the longest verse contains 90 words. Where is it found? Where is the longest verse found? No, oh, I didn't know this one either. Esther 8, verse 9. Esther 8 and verse 9. Now this one I do know. What is the longest chapter in the Bible? I bet a lot of you know this one. Psalm 119. It's divided into little sections that correspond to the Hebrew letters in their alphabet. That's what those little headings are in um, your Bible for Psalm 119. Okay, number 15. What is the shortest chapter in the Bible? Hmm, it only contains two verses. I want to say this is found in Psalms also. Oh, I'm wrong. The shortest chapter is... Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, that, that was mixed up. I got the wrong thing. Yep, it's in Psalm 117. 117. 117. Psalm 117. You have to look these up and read these um, together with your family. What is the shortest verse in the Bible? Okay, this one has only two words. Just like the shortest chapter has two verses, this has two words. And they are Jesus wept. John 11:35. And as you can see, when I pull back, we've made an outline of the Bible, of a book. So that's what the puzzle goes together to make. The Bible, the most important book in the history of the world. Thank you for uh, following along with this. Um, if you would like to do some songs together on the videos, uh, have your parents, or if you can yourself, send me a message, and I'll be happy to do that. Okay, Sunday we'll talk about another one of God's amazing creatures. Have a great week. Love you. Bye.